Hello, everyone. Today, we will continue to look at the Red Hat System Administrative Certification Question Bank. Next, we have question 12. Here, you need to pay attention because question 12 can be solved with a single command, but... Where is it easy to make mistakes? It's easy to make mistakes if you don't carefully read the question requirements. The question requires us to create a compressed package like this. But, what exactly is the name and format of the compressed package? You must pay close attention to this. First, the name? It's written here. But as for the format, it's obvious, looking at the name, what format should we use? Well, we should use the bzip2 method to compress, right? However, in the question it says, well, you need to use the jzip2 format to compress. So what should we do? To meet the requirements of this question, actually, the format we need to compress with must be jzip2. But the name it requires is the bzip2 name. So what do we do? Actually, there's no conflict. Ah, everyone should note that there's actually no conflict. You should look at the specific situation in the question to decide how to write this command. It's not the name that determines it, but the format that follows. Ah, you should consider the actual exam situation, which means you need to clearly see what format it requires. If there's no format requirement, then just go by the name. Whatever the name is, we compress it in that format. However, if there's a name, and also a format requirement, if they are consistent, then it doesn't matter. But if the name and the required format are inconsistent, which one takes precedence? The format takes precedence. Because in our system, the name never has any significance. Ah, mainly the suffix. Here, I'm mainly talking about the suffix of the name, the file name suffix. Actually, in our system, it doesn't have any significance, even though it shows here. Right? But actually, it's hard to say what kind of file it is inside, right? So here, we first you can directly do what? Directly compress? You can directly compress. If you're missing a command, you can just install it. Ah, here we can directly use the TLR command to compress the file. According to the requirements of the task, what should it actually be? It should be. It should be like this. Ah, according to the requirements provided in our PPT, it should be like this. And the name written here is... This name must not be written incorrectly. There are requirements in the task. Yes, it's like this. In this task, we require a specific name. And then, here, we need to use this name as the name of the compressed package. So, which directory do we compress? We compress our user, local directory, that's all. The correctness of this task is actually determined mainly here. It's about what format we use to compress. And finally, what name it ends up with. If there is a conflict in the task. The format takes precedence. If there's no conflict, you can write it like this. So, in the absence of conflict, if I wanted to end with bj2, how should I write it? G, CVF. Ah, because here is the bz2 command. Z is the gzip2 command. Please pay attention to this. Here, it requires everyone to be very familiar with these compression formats. If you're not familiar, you should take some time to memorize them. Now, let's do some compression here. Alright, after compressing. Hey! After compressing, you just need to check if the file name is correct. There's nothing else that needs checking. Just check if the file name is correct. Then we can see here, why is the format jzip? Ah, as long as this matches the requirements of the task. Then if the name matches the task requirements, there's no problem. This task is done, and this is our method for creating a compressed file. Ah, if you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. That's it for today. Everyone, goodbye.